is live now or no? We can't change it. No, 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 that's fine. We can't change our audibly live. I don't know what video packages you have. I don't know what video packages you have. You're going to play it. Where's, where's it mic'd up here?
Hello? Hey Mike, I, I can't see Schwartz's uh, iPad. Is it on or no? Yep, I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah, seven or one, let's go. Mike, you good? Let's go. Go ahead. Live from an undisclosed location in the heart of the Jersey Shore, it's live with hometown heroes. Tonight, join Mike and his guests Tommy John, Brighton James, Chef Lou Smith, and I'm Adam J. Hershorn, and here's your host, Mike Schwartz. There we are. Oh, <laughs> that happened. Oh, everybody, thanks for watching. It's been a great week so far. Tomorrow night, we got Bruce Willis here. Jerry Seinfeld's going to be stopping by, and Daryl Hall and John Oates will be performing. That'll be a fun one, right, Adam? That's that's right. I think it's going to be a fantastic show next week. But tonight, it's going to be amazing. Nice to have you here virtually. Tonight, we've got a fantastic show. Of course, we have Tommy John on the show. Uh, from the Tommy the John. Wilson family. What's that? I said Tommy John. Tommy John. Baseball legend Tommy John. Also from the Young and the Restless Family Matters. Brighton James will be here. And, of course, from Blend on Main and uh, from Hell's Kitchen fame, Chef Lou Smith will be joining us. So great to have Lou on the show. I want to thank our sponsors, AJH Entertainment, of course, DJ Expert Live Studios. And, of course, uh, Adam, I don't have it here, but I know Trading Post Jerky has been a nice sponsor, a great sponsor of ours. Do you have any Trading Post Jerky there? Your, uh... I, I don't. Um, the warehouse um, was going to ship us our beef jerky, but due to the USPS mail and everything going on right now, they're a little delayed, but... Um, they said we're going to have a whole new shipment next week, and we can't wait for that. So. Okay. So we're not even mentioning Trading Post Jerky today. Oh. I'm starving right now. I was I was I was hunkering down for some Trading Post Jerky tonight. I got zero. I got Zippo. Nine. I, I know. I know. We. I was excited too. So, Trading Post Jerky. You guys. You guys don't That's fail cool. your taste, but we failed on getting some right now. <laughs> You blew it, Jason, in trading post jerky. That's all right. We got Blend on Main here tonight, and I know we're going to have some uh, some some culinary delights from Chef Lou here at, from Blend on Main. So I'll 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 survive. I'll be okay. I think I'll be okay too. It's, it's not it's not the best having you here uh, on, on 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 Skype, but I know we have to social distance. So tell me about your week. Anything good happen? Um, my 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 week has been you know not really not much going on, but uh. 
I just started this new program. Um, we are calling it Socially Distanced Dance Parties. Um, we're taking our DJ skills, what we do as an entertainment uh, company, and I'm, I'm going out. And um, you, you, you've seen all those celebration parades, right, Mike? Is this you right here? Socially Distanced Dance Party? Is that you in the picture? That, that is me Photoshopped in. I did a pretty good job at that, huh? Sure. All right. Um, I know. I always like to pat Can't myself. Tell you, it's very tiny on my screen, but that's fine. That's all right. But um, what we're doing is we're going out. Smart. Yeah, we're going out into the community. We're um, you know, setting up the DJ equipment, doing some interactive dances, some silly kind of songs, and uh, keeps keeping it fun, simple, and we're partying. We're dancing and we're trying to feel normal again, but everybody's kind of separated, socially distanced. And um, this is incorporated with all those birthday parades, you know, and all those celebration parades too. So something that I'm doing to get out there, keep my business going, still get noticed, and then hopefully we'll get back to normal soon. Yeah, well, I know, I know. It's, it's a lot of fun. I appreciate what you're doing. Everybody's trying to do something cool. Uh, we got to make a living. Of course, you own a, a DJ and entertainment company. Yeah. So, uh, you know, no weddings, of course, going on right now because no one can congregate. So I admire what you're doing. I think it's great. And if Thank anybody you. wants support, you should check out AJH Entertainment and uh, try to help Adam out, uh, his family, uh, great family. Uh, where's Ada, by the way? Uh, she She's downstairs right now. She's just relaxing. And I think she's actually watching. So uh, it, I think she's a big fan of this show. All right. Well, you know, I, I have to mention, too, we had some sad news. Obviously, with this, this, this COVID uh, pandemic going on, uh, last week we had uh, Wonder Mike and Flo on the show, and uh, I got a call from from Flo this week. And Rob, one of the guys in the group, one of the DJs, uh, his wife Judy uh, passed away this week. So I just wanted to pay my respects and condolences to Judy. Obviously, this is this has taken everybody by storm, and it's it's really tough, obviously, to be in this situation and all this social distancing. But you know, there's Judy on the screen there with Flo. Um, and so my condolences to Rob and, and Judy's family. I, uh, sorry to hear this. Very sad news for our family. Um, and, you know, we want to try and do this to come out to you every week and give you some fun, something different. Uh, coming up with some great guests, some fun people to, to, to chat with every week and, and just, you know, try to get out of this, this funk that we're all in. And, um, you know, it was tough to hear that news uh, this week. So, like I said, my condolences to uh, the Sugar Hill Gang and their family. Uh, Same tonight. here. Same here. So, you know, we got a great show. I, I had a, uh, I, I've been out testing folks, and I've been running around like a madman, and, and, and I had to stop by and see some friends today. And uh, I went to my friend Mike's house, and I backed out my car, and I hit one of those, um, I, I, what do you call it, a flower pot, but you know, one of those planter thingies with all the bricks kind of around it where you can, you know, outline a driveway? Yeah, uh, right, right at the, the driveway. Some, some, like, really nice, what was it, stucco, concrete, masonry, you know? Whatever you call it. But I ruined this driveway, basically, and I popped my tire. I had a flat tire today, and it was the worst day in the world. And I want to thank uh, Mike and Damon uh, Corpon for, for hooking us up today, for helping me out. The, these guys were great. They had, like, the little air jack thing, and the uh, I don't know how to explain it. It was like a pit crew. I had my tire changed in three minutes. But, of course, because COVID, I have to wait, like, you know, five days now for a tire until it comes in. But I want to thank those yeah. guys. Uh, the other day, by the way, I went to the bank. Okay. And I had an appointment. They called me and said to me, um, you got to come in with a mask on. And I just kind of thought to myself, like, how ironic is that, that I have to go <laughs> into the bank <laughs> with a mask on? Like, when does that ever happen in society? It's kind of breaking down. I, 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 th I think we should start a trend, Mike, that um, I'm going to be going on a Halloween.com and just ordering all these, you know, plastic masks and just wearing those out. Um, one day I'll be a gorilla. One day I'll be, you know, Frankenstein. Um, it, it'll be fun. You, you think you think that's kind of like medically okay to do? It, whatever. It, anything goes apparently with this thing, you know. Uh, I I don't know. I guess so. It, it's been kind of a nightmare. Uh, it was nice to see you last week, and unfortunately now because of this thing, we really have to social distance. So we're trying to do our part over here. I think from now on, you know, I'm going to, I was actually looking at, and I go out, you know, I, and, and we have a company, we, we actually have been doing a lot of COVID testing. Okay. Uh, I wanted to get a, a Deadpool outfit. And for the nurses, I was thinking <laughs> uh, like Catwoman, because at this point now it really doesn't matter. You just got to wear a mask. Cause why, why not wear a costume with it? I think it would be fun. Yeah. Uh, why, why not? I think this whole, uh, and, and I actually think by wearing a costume, you're going to create laughter and, and some kind of, you know, amusement, which we're all lacking right now. So, yeah. uh, 
I, I, I think we absolutely need that. So let, let, let's do that. Next week, bring your, bring your favorite Halloween mask go right on the show. I will. And you know what next week you should do is make sure I have some Trading Post jerky because I'm hungry. And I know our producers are hungry. Everybody in here is hungry. We're all socially distant, so they're like all like 50 feet away. But uh, I need some food. At least, at least, at least, Chef Lou is coming through tonight and bringing us Thank some. God for Chef Lou! I can't wait to have him on the show. But first, you know who we have on the show tonight? Who, who do we have? Uh, we got a great guest. I mean, we got a lot of great guests. But his first guest. Let me tell you a little bit about our first guest. All right. First of all, this gentleman played 26. Mike, I think you have a clip, right? You throw that up. This gentleman played 26 seasons uh, from 1963 to 1989. He played with the Indians, the White Sox, the Dodgers, the Angels. Uh, the Oakland Athletics, and most importantly, he played with my team, the New York Yankees. Uh, he's a four-time All-Star. He's got 288 career victories. He's seventh. Uh, those 288 career victories rank seventh among left-handed uh, pitchers. in 700, 760 career games, 2,245 strikeouts. And he's, of course, famous for uh, a surgery that is named after him, which is an ulnar collateral ligament replacement. We'll talk to him. Uh, can we please see our good friend, Tommy John, everybody? Tommy John. I don't see Tommy. This is that problem with a live show, folks. This is what happens. It works. It works. We're we're all good. So we can chat. We have photos of Tommy John. Well, Tom, so Tommy was a New York Yankee. It's kind of a. We're gonna bring him in. I can hear him now. I can hear him. Where is he? Uh, uh, producer Mike West. Right here, baby. Hey, Tommy. How you doing? I'm doing fine. You? I'm great. I don't see you, though. <laughs> there he is up there, Christian. Yeah, yeah, he's right there. You don't see me? What's that? There we go. There you are. I see you now. How you doing, buddy? Good, thank you. Good to have you here. Now, I got to ask the question that is burning on everyone's mind right now. How many surgeries have you done? <laughs> <laughs> well, I do about two a day. <laughs> in our in our back patio and when we run out of ligaments i just use my dog's ligaments <laughs> <laughs> you know it's funny i mean i mean it's so funny you play this career and, and and we hear your name every single day now because every single major league pitcher is having this surgery i think almost by design now i think some people just want the surgery um and it's kind of funny i, I had a friend call me up and they I said yeah we got tommy john on the show and they're like are you going to have him do your surgery? I said, well, I'll ask him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Tommy, uh, you're you know, I, I, I gained, you know, I, I went from 55 miles an hour to about 110 after I had the surgery. And uh, <laughs> yeah, but well, people you, think that you're going to throw harder if you have the surgery. And the surgery itself just, it corrects an injury is all it does. You know, and it's better to me. It's better to have a Tommy John surgery on your elbow than a Tommy John surgery on your butt to correct hemorrhoids. <laughs> yeah, you, you're out. You're calling in from uh, sunny California, I guess, right? It's absolutely beautiful out here. Communist state that it is, but it's okay. How are you dealing with uh, with all this this uh, nonsense that we got going on, COVID? I think the word you used is nonsense. I think it's what we're doing is bullshit. Um, I, I, my son is a doctor, and he said your body, your immune system will take care of, you know, and, and if you look at what they say, these are the people that are going to get it, over 60, uh, diabetes, this, that. Well, it's people that have problems are the ones that are going to get it, but yet we're all in that category. And if we can't go out on the golf course, what better place out in the sunshine, fresh air, and, and we can't even go out and play golf. We've got to be quarantined. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I think that's pretty crazy. And Tommy, my name is Adam. I'm Mike's co-host. Uh, I think I think it's absolutely ridiculous where we can't go out, enjoy a park, enjoy um, you know golf, enjoy sports, whatever we can do right now, and just play and get out there and get some exercise. I, I but people are going to shop rights and uh, local food stores where they're crowded. You know, yeah. I mean that, that's yeah. a breeding ground. I, I I don't know. I I just think that. Um... The other thing I don't understand, it came in here and all of a sudden it went boom, Washington, the state of Washington had it bad. Then all of a sudden, New York State, then Jersey, then Connecticut, then all these states. And now, I mean, it's all over now. How come, how come in China, it started in Wuhan, and never went to any of their cities. Yeah, that is what, if somebody can tell me that, and I believe them, then I'll, I'll buy it. But I, I just how do how do you? It starts in a place, and it never goes any farther than that. It just goes to the U.S. and to Italy and France and uh, you know and all that. But uh, it's just it's I don't know. I I I think. Personally, I'm a Trumpster. I've, I've known Donald since 1979. I play golf with him, and he's kicked my ass on the golf course a lot. But I think it was the, the virus was put out there by the Chinese to bring him down because he was bringing them down. Yeah, yeah. That's my opinion. You yeah, know, and you can it. say, well, no, it's not. It's this. But you just don't. Something just doesn't happen and then explode worldwide unless it was designed to do that. Well, look, I mean, we don't know a lot about it yet, Tommy. I mean, it's one of those things. It's uh, obviously it's dangerous, and we got a lot of friends and family in the healthcare industry, and you know we have friends yeah. that are suffering from this thing. So, you know, um, we're, as we learn more every day, it seems every hour, um, you know, hopefully we'll figure this thing out and get back to our country we had a great, vibrant economy going and oh my god yes. yeah yeah oh. we, a lot of folks just want to get back to work and, and get back to normalcy so we, you know, i hope you guys are staying safe and we'll, we'll get there all we time. are we're as my son said my immune system will take care of me yeah well god willing let's let's hope that's for good you know for everybody right now i how um you know I, you had such a long career 26 seasons. I know you got a book out uh, as well that, that highlighted those 26 seasons. Um, what? Give me. And by the way, you know I'm a big Yankee fan. We talked about this, and uh, we had Brian Hoke on the show last week, uh, the, the writer for the New York Yankees. Uh, I, you know, when I think of Tommy John, I always think of the New York Yankees. What, what was your favorite team to play for? Give me some highlights and some moments. Well, uh, organizationally. It was the Dodgers when the O'Malley's owned it. Uh, Mr. O'Malley and Peter O'Malley made you feel like you were part of their family. And um, but fan-wise, you can't beat the Yankees. They may. Quick story: five pitches into my Yankee debut, five pitches, and. I threw four straight balls and walked uh, walked a lead, lead off hitter. The next pitch ball, next pitch ball. So that's six pitches. John, you suck. You and I got the New York wrath right then. Six pitches into my New York career, yeah. and people are yelling that I suck. And you know, I I did, but. Uh. <laughs> what. You were telling me a story the other day, and I know, and our, and our good, our mutual friend Bill Francis is nice enough to uh, to help us out with this this week's show. Um, you were telling me a story the other day on the phone. I don't know if you want to repeat it, but I'm sure you got a ton of them. Oh, the Billy Martin story. <laughs> I did. I did kind of tease that to the audience. So sure. <laughs> well, <laughs> Billy was unique, and. Um, but, uh, you know, I went up to the clubhouse 
and we were playing in uh, Anaheim, and the door to his um, office was closed. And the clubhouse kid said, don't go in there. Yeah, well, I'm not going to go in this thing. And I, so I go up to the door and I listen and I hear this woman going, oh, 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 oh. And Billy was having sex with a photographer during the ball game, left the bench, went up. <laughs> now, how he signaled her like this, do you? up there and she <laughs> went up uh, but they ended up getting married so i guess it was okay i, I don't right. know but that was a billy martin here's one for you yeah uh i'm playing uh, pit, pitching for the yankees and the night before i'm pitching on a sunday we're playing oakland the night before uh i disciplined my daughter and she was right about that 13, 14 year old, you know, the little, where they're little shits. <laughs> and as I leave to um, go to the ballpark that Sunday, she comes out and says, I hope Mark McGuire hits home runs off you. And I go, wow, okay. So, I go out, don't think anything of it. First time Mark comes up, I throw him a little sinker away and he takes it to right field. Boom, fly ball, Boom. home run, okay. Next time up, I throw him the same pitch, sinker away, he goes right field, Boom. home run. And I go, oh, little shit's jinxed me. I'm jinxed. I, what am I going to do? The right. third time up, he's got a runner on first base, and I throw him the same pitch. And instead of doing what he did the first two times, he tried to pull it, hits a ground ball. Six, four, three, double play. And as he comes across the mound, I kind of walk with him. Well, I, I've known Mark for a long time because his father was my dentist. Yeah. So... He comes across the mound, and I just said, I outdumbed you. And I go on, I win the game four to two. The only two runs Oakland's got were his his two home runs. Well, yeah, and yeah. Um, as I'm going to my car, he gets off the team bus. And he comes out, and he said, what did you say to me when I walked across the mound? I said, I outdumbed you. You thought I was smarter than that. You thought I was going to change. I threw you, Mark, I can throw that sinker low and away more time than you have stones to hit the ball to right field. Mark McGuire doesn't want to hit the ball to right field. Yeah. He goes, oh, oh, okay, all right. So about 10 days later, I'm facing him up in Oakland. And the first time up, I go, sinker off the plate, ball one. Sinker off the plate, ball two. Two and oh. Great hitting count. I run a fastball inside on him, and it jams him, and he pops it up. And he comes back across the mound, and I walk with him a little bit, and I said, not every time am I going to throw the ball low and away. You just have to pick out when I'm going to and go the opposite way. But Mark was a good hitter. You know, all the BS that went on, on the on the ball, hit 49 home runs as a rookie. Oh, yeah. For Pete's oh, yeah. sake, so, you know. Yeah. Tommy, who, Tommy, who is the toughest batter you ever faced? The best hitter I ever saw was Wade Boggs. The toughest hitter for me, statistically, and I didn't find this out until uh, somebody sent me a thing, uh, was Ned Yost. Ned was 12 for 14 off of me. Okay. And I, I, he wasn't a tough hitter. I couldn't get him out. Whatever I threw Mark McGuire and got, got him out, I couldn't get Ned. But um, Ken Griffey Sr. hit me well. Now, I could get Junior out. Junior was a piece of cake. But he was only 
10 years old at the time, so I didn't have to worry much about him. Yeah. <laughs> Griffey, Griffey, and uh, they're both good hitters there. Right? Wade Boggs, I mean, he's one of the best. Boggs was the best I've ever seen. Yeah, one of the best Perfect. in baseball. Yeah. As, as were you as a pitcher. I mean, what, you know, you, and you played, you, that's a long career. Uh, did you think that when you had the elbow injury uh, before this surgery was proven, did you think your career might be over when that happened? Well, if I didn't have the surgery, it was over. Right, but so, were you worried about yeah. were you worried about it taking to make sure that you could cut because you were really the you were the first guy. I was first guy to have it. And no, I I wanted to play baseball. I wanted to play baseball, and the only way I could play baseball was to have the surgery. And I told Doctor Job, if you do your job, I will more than do my job of rehabbing. And he said, okay, that that's a deal. And he lived up to his and I lived up to mine and uh, we did a good job as a team. Yeah, well, you, cause you were, you were known for that slow kind of curveball that, you know, would, 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 would get a lot of ground ball outs. Um, after the surgery, you found out you were throwing a little harder. No, I threw the same. Uh, uh, when I got back, I, I told the pitching coach with the Dodgers, a guy named Red Adams, I said, Red Dog, make sure I'm throwing the ball the same way I did before surgery. He yeah. reached in his pocket, pulled out his uh, pad, and said, what does it say there? It says, Tommy John, same delivery. And, oh, okay, so that's what he wanted, and that's what I did. No, I, I threw, if I threw a ball game, and I threw 100 pitches, and I was on, I would throw maybe 85, 88 fastballs, sinkers down the way, and I'd throw the other pitch would be curveballs, because I only had two pitches. Right. I had a sinker and a curveball. And mm -hmm. I just threw sinker, 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 because I could hit low and away more times than the hitters wanted to go to right center on me. Okay. I got I got a couple of people tweeting in here. They want to. And by the way, uh, Bill Francis just tweeted in. He's pledging twenty five dollar donation, uh, and he said he would like Tommy John to do a shout out to him and tell folks to donate. Uh, and that's from our friend Bill Francis. He just did a twenty five dollar donation. So if you could say hi to Bill. Thanks, uh, Bill hey. Francis. Thank you for the donation. Uh, stay safe down in Key West. It's, and if you run into Ernest Hemingway, tell him I said hi. <laughs> and uh, uh and, and, yeah, i'd and like to be yeah, anybody that doesn't know you know log in to the website it's right on mike's desk www.usahometownheroes.org uh you can go and donate um any substantial amount will help and uh we're helping out everybody within the community that is affected with covid19 so tommy thank you so much and uh bill francis thank you so much thanks for having me on and um, god bless you and uh, have me on again after we're after we're out here playing 18 holes of golf and cursing and sweating and all that when all this stuff's over. We, Tommy, we, how, do, how yeah. do I get a fan here who wants to know how to get a signed copy of the book? Where do, where where can they pick up uh, one of your one of your books? Uh, I guess Amazon, right? Amazon right. probably is the best, and um, send it to me. And uh, for a healthy donation to me, I'll sign it to him. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to hold that to uh, Gerard Nicoletti, who just who just wrote in for that. So, Gerard, you can get in touch, sure. and I'll make sure that happens. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, we'd love to see you again. I hope we all get through this. I will. I will uh, come out, and uh, maybe we'll have you uh, here at a golf outing, and and uh, we could we could have some fun on the course ourselves. Where is here now? Uh, well, I'm in New Jersey, right? We're in an undisclosed location. In Are New you Jersey. one of the husbands, the real husbands of the housewives? Of no. No, I, I not. last I checked, no. <laughs> no, 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 but I, but, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tell you, I love that show because those women on there were just like the mothers of my uh, on my kids' baseball teams. They they sat up there and they they had that Jersey accent, and they would be like Tr Teresa Judice, you know, with that twang, 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 twang. But I love it. I love it. Do you, get, do, you get, do you get back out here to the stadium at all? 
Where, New York? Yeah. Only if they pay me. Okay. Well, I got, I got a lot of our friends playing in the uh, old-timers game on, uh, I think it's, well, it was supposed to be August 11th. Uh, cause I don't uh, get invited to fantasy camps, and I don't get invited to old-timers games. All right. Well, we'll we'll have to try to change that. I'll put a couple words out to at least the folks that I know and see if we can get you to come back. All right. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. God bless. Thank you so much, Tommy John. God bless. Good to see you. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. All right. That's Tommy John, everybody. Tommy John, one of the best pitchers in baseball, uh, obviously, uh, everybody, synonymous with the Tommy John surgery, which uh, I'm going to have to have, I think, after, because uh, I, I, from eating the beef jerky last week, my elbow is starting to hurt. Well, wait until you eat Lou, Lou Smith's uh, meal today, you know? I can't wait. I'm starving. I, I'm almost kind of like, I want to I eat it now, but, you know, I got to wait because we have other guests coming on the show. So that's fine. It is what it is. Um, uh, can you still hear me, buddy? I, I could still hear you, but I think Tommy is still on the other line, which we can still hear him. So uh, you got to hang, hang him up. But. Adam's on a delay. Well, you know, we got we got the best producer in the business over here. Awesome. Like, awesome. Which, which, by the way, is expert DJ expert live studios. If anybody wants some work, I'm trying to help out my friends here to get them some work in this crisis because everybody's not working. So call DJ Mike West at DJ expert live studios and. Uh, you know, he was just showing me a commercial he put together for a client the other day. It's phenomenal. This work this kid does is like, it's unbelievable. And I've known Mike for, well, I'll call him a kid. I've known him for like 20 some years at this point. But, uh, you know, and he's older than me. I've got more hair. I'm kidding. He's probably younger than me, but I'm just messing around. <laughs> and don't forget, we are sponsors. I want to mention, of course, Adam, you want to say it with me? Ready? Pose. Jerky. Jerky. Thank you. You can't it. do this with a delay. Uh, you get free online shipping. You use code MARKET for uh, trading post jerky, and uh, you can help out our friends. Also, we want to thank our other sponsor, Blend on Main. Of course, uh, we have Chef Lou coming up with us in uh, just a few minutes. But first, our next guest, uh, let's get to him right now. He's uh, he's on hold. You got him uh, in, in, a, in a holding pattern so we don't have to wait, Mike? All right, good. <laughs> oh, I can hear Mike now. Fantastic. Um Brighton James, everybody. Brighton James has started his show business career at the ripe old age of two years old. You got that clip, Mike? It's tough doing a live show, folks. Here we go. Brighton James, two years old. Uh, when he was four years old, he was a star on Family Matters. He played the, uh, the young uh, son, Richie Crawford. And, of course, uh, now he is featured uh, uh, as a regular on Young and the Restless. Uh, please welcome our good friend, Brighton James. Hey, you guys. There you are. Hey, hey. You, but I can't see. There you are. Nope, that's Tommy John. <laughs> Brighton, are you there? I am there. Can you see me? Yeah. You know, these live things are a little rough. We'll get. We'll figure it out in the next it's, couple of weeks. There you are. I can see you now. How you doing? I'm doing very well. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming on today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. These things are tough. These things are really tough. Now, you're in California as well, right? Yes. Yes. Here in California. Are you guys still film? You still filming now or no? You're on hiatus. No, we've been on hiatus. We've been uh, uh, locked down and uh, for about, gosh, almost I think a month now. Okay. All right. Yeah. Wow. Tell, tell us about. I, I know it's tough dealing with this, and I apologize for. There you go. There's there's Brighton's uh, Twitter handle here. So uh, I love people to tweet in, say hello, say hi. You um you started at such a young age in your career. I did. I did. I. Uh, Gosh, my uh, I remember my first commercial where was I was two and a half. People, uh, big friends of my parents would would tell them they should get me into uh, doing something in the industry just because I was I was a bit outgoing and could follow directions well and articulate. And my uh, some some people set my parents up with one audition for a Disney commercial that they took me on the wrong day, but okay. the producer was there and I ended up talking to uh, talking to him for about 15 20 minutes and they gave me the part. Luckily, and and then I uh, a year later I got on Family Matters when I was uh, three and a half. Wow, yeah, that's awesome. You, you weren't now you weren't in the in the pilot, right? Because they didn't they have the they had another you, actor yeah. in the pilot or something. Yeah, there was there was an infant infant baby um, in the pilot um, in my, most of the first season, and then I came on. Uh, actually, I think I was just at the very beginning of the second season. Okay, you know you know that was one of Adam J's uh, favorite shows. Favorite. Oh, really? 
<laughs> favorite show. I mean, it was uh, for Halloween. I mean, I dressed up as Steve Urkel. I mean, that that's how much of a favorite show it was. So, uh, you yeah. know, it, it's yeah. it. I, we we actually believe it or not, um, Mike and myself, we actually starred with you. You don't remember us being in in the cast you as a young child, correct? When you guys were on Family Matters? Yeah, look, look at the picture. Let me see. How, how are you guys doing? Now, see, now, this is when you throw me an audible. Yeah, I can see. Okay, thanks, Adam. The, it's such a small, yeah. Yeah, I can see it. That's Adam as Urkel. I, I see what he did there. <laughs> ah, I gotcha. Right. How did I miss you guys? Right? How yeah, did well, you didn't know we were on the show all those years. What, um... <laughs> Now, Bill Francis tells me you have a favorite Urkel story you wanted to tell, so I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you go nuts. Who's got a favorite Urkel story? I, I, that's, what, that's, what, that's what our producer told me. He said you had a great Urkel story. I have a great Urkel story. Oh boy, I don't know well, where that came fire. from, but uh, we're gonna fire Bill. Jeez, yeah, Bill's got to go. I mean, I. I <laughs> no, I'll, I, I. My God, I can't think of just one. Well, I mean, I know something, obviously. No, my favorite scene, my favorite scene for sure was with Jaleel, and he um, he created a tornado. I don't know if you guys remember this, a tornado that happened inside the, the kitchen. Correct. And it was the first time I got to get, I was, they hooked me up to these wires, and they had me, like I was hanging onto the door hinges, and I was, uh, like I was flying. And I remember that being one of the coolest, one of the coolest episodes I got to film, just because of the, you know, the theatrics that went into it, but um, no, I mean, I, I've all my stories with with uh, with Jaleel are great. And most recently, we had a 20-year reunion, I think, since the last episode um, a few years back, where Entertainment Weekly got us all together and, and did some photos and, and an interview with all of us. And I hadn't seen them any of the cast since uh, since the show ended, but um, you know, seeing seeing Jaleel and. And everyone else was was a great time. He, he's he's a great guy. Grew up to be a great guy and a great father too. What was, awesome. that, what was that like being a child actor? And I mean, it's what you've done all your career. It's not you know, this is something I can't imagine kind of getting into it at two years old and all of a sudden being on a hit show at four and then that is kind of your life. Yeah, it was my life. I, I, I really didn't know anything different. I for the first few years I thought everybody did what I did. Um, and uh, I remember probably when I was about five or six, starting to ask my parents and wonder, you know, how do people know who I am and you know, why are they coming up to me and, and uh, starting to realize what it was about. But it was, I, I never had a day where I didn't enjoy being on set or I didn't want to memorize my lines. Um, so I, I was very fortunate for that and I, I wouldn't have changed or traded my childhood for anything. I, I was able to, you know, I, I was on local baseball teams. I went to school dances. I, I had a a, um, a a pretty normal childhood in that regard. But um, all the things I got to do because of Family Matters, all the traveling and all the, the people I, I got to meet, and um, you know, it was just I wouldn't trade it for anything. So it, it was a, it was a great time. And and I I also um, know that. Uh, Michael Jackson was a close friend of yours. Yes, yes, very much so. A friend of mine and my family's. I, I was, um, I had written a letter to him when I was about five or six, and um, a, a woman that worked for his production company at the time was um, uh, had a, a small part on Family Matters, and she was able to get the letter to him, and he wrote me back. And then a, a few years later, myself and Raven Simone. Um, from the Cosby Show, we presented Michael with an NAACP award, and uh, my we got to go backstage afterwards, and and my father and I got to meet him and some of his cousins and who were my age, and he invited us all to come to the ranch. He invited me and my and my parents, which we did, and he um, from that point on, you know, he told me and my family, whenever you guys want to come, it's open to you. I spent almost every birthday there, uh, and he would keep in touch with me throughout my entire life, all the way till he passed. Um, uh, just as, as, a, as a friend and mentor, advice giver, um, when, I, when I started getting involved with um, a lot of charity organizations at a very young age, I, I Heal the World was one of them, as, where he asked me to, to be a youth spokesperson for it. 
and um, he he was just one of the most amazing people I'd ever known. And uh, I wish everybody in the world could have could could spend one day with that man. Yeah, it, it seems seems like uh, I mean just myself, uh, just about myself. I'm I'm a professional DJ, and and just you know when I play a Michael Jackson song, it's, you know, the, the room just raves, even though, you know, you have all this hearsay stuff from all this Netflix special and Emma Amazon specials that's gone on, you know, in the last, you know, few months. Sure. I mean, it, it's just been, you know, people are like, oh, I'm never playing a Michael Jackson song ever again. I could never do that. I'm sorry. That's a party starter, you know? <laughs> well, he just, he just did, he did what he did with so much love and intention. Uh, you know, he he's uh, he did everything in his life and endured everything. I mean, he was somebody who had enough money to to hang it hang it up after at, at, as a teenager, you yeah. know. But he kept going and he kept enduring what the world threw at him because he wanted to give back. You know, he's in the I think the only entertainer in the Guinness Book of World Records for charitable contribution. Um, yeah. And you know, he 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 endured a lot, but he did it with love, and he was a message that he you know, died trying to spread. Yeah. Tirelessly. <laughs> right. I know, um, I know you're good friends with, uh, uh, Daniel Goddard and Daniel's coming on the show next week. Yeah. You guys, you, you guys have a, a new project that you're working on. You want to talk about that? We do actually. Yeah. I, I, I can't say uh, too much. I know he'll really go into detail, but, um, but yeah, for the, for the last, for the last year now, we've been, we've been working on, on something that, that we're very excited about. Um, We've uh, we've we've developed a new efficient way for people to find and connect with each other like never before. Because um, what we found by being on Young the Restless for so long, I've been on for 16 years. Daniel was on for I think about 13 um, before he left the show. But what we found just by being on the show and, and meeting so many different fans all over the world was that people with you know like minds and like interests and goals, they just want to connect. And they want to find each other, and they want to find those who are just like them with commonalities that they can use as a foundation to build new relationships. So what we created um, is an app that um, – it's an app that first allows you to house all of your digital identities into one place, uh, be it your Instagram, your Facebook, Twitter, your LinkedIn, any personal websites or e-commerce sites you may have. Um, I noticed actually when I was looking when I was looking up you guys, I found that, that Hometown Heroes has a few different places where you guys like to post. Right. So, you know, you'd be able to link every one of your platforms to the profile you the profile you would create in our app, and then you could send people to just one place when sharing information. Um, and then you'd attach keywords in the form of hashtags to that profile, uh, and be found or find anyone else in the world who uses those exact same hashtags and they're completely customizable. So for hometown heroes, you guys could create a, a, a profile and use hashtag community building, hashtag nonprofit, hashtag volunteer, hashtag fundraising, hashtag disaster relief. And any and everyone who is using those same hashtags will instantly match up with you so that you can reach out and connect with them, send messages for free and further build your community of people who want to make a difference or into the same things that you're into so right. he'll he'll go into far more detail than that uh, but we're, we're looking for it to uh to be out um by next week so we would love all the support we can get that, uh, yeah. we're happy to help support that and i know it'd be perfect timing you a little teaser from you today and then daniel <laughs> will come on next week and talk about that yeah um, what's it like being a, a soap punk because every time i look up you know i get i got shirtless pictures of like it make me want to go to the gym Oh gosh! <laughs> well, you know it's funny. They, they, they. I was on for probably ten years before they ever asked me to take my shirt off on the show, and I think it's because I started going to the gym. If I would have been smart enough, I would have done that a lot sooner. But no, nah, it's, it's cool. I mean, you know, it's it's a soap opera. When I first auditioned for the show, I was, I was, seventeen, and um, all I knew from soaps were what I, I. I remember my mom would watch General Hospital every day growing up, and I would always overhear these adult storylines, you know, going on. So I, I, I didn't really know what they had in store for me getting on the show, but 
I've been very fortunate over my time to to have been given some pretty meaningful storylines, not just you know the, the typical you know ones where you where you're seeing people take their shirts off and and. Uh, <laughs> we, we asked we asked Adam to take his shirt off on this show, but then we made him put it back on. So. <laughs> well, now now uh, well, no, now no, you no. asked for it. Now you know. <laughs> we have, we're going to lose all of our viewers. Please stop, Adam. Thank you. Um, got, I'm, I'm reading. I'm reading. Um, right, and I got a whole bunch of. Uh, we got a lot of friends here, and they're all tweeting in and, and saying where Bill Francis says he's going to pledge another twenty five dollars. If Brighton shouts out to Jess Walton and asks folks to donate, I don't know who's who, who. Do I am I missing who Jess Walton is? I don't know who that is. Jess Walton. Jess Walton. Yeah, she's she's an f- amazing actress um, on our show. She plays uh, uh, Jill Abbott, and um, she. What, what is? What did he say? He wants me to shout out and say everybody to donate. He wants to you to shout out Jess Walton and ask folks to donate. And then Renee. Uh, Kinsey is saying is she's she's they're having a battle now on 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 this tweet thing, and okay. she's saying if you always have strings attached. How about a shout out to Barry House? To who? Barry Barry House. Barry House. Shout out to Barry House and shout out to 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 Jess Walton. There and, you go. Hey, well, yeah. Well, well, now we'll get now now Bill Francis has to come back with twenty five bucks. So that'll work. Go. That's it. And uh, Brighton, this is my daughter Ada. She oh, wants to come and see you. Hello, Ada. How are you? Say hi. hi. <laughs> nice to meet you, Ada. That is the star of the show, Brighton. That, that that's I, it. This is this is the one. I could tell. I could tell. She's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> she she, she, be, she, she looks be just like my husband. wife. <laughs> how how old are you, Ada? How old are you? Two. Two years old. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's and very she's, nice. And she's, a, and she's a big Young and the Restless fan, right? Now. Really? <laughs> she's a big Young and the Restless fan. Hey, how about a Family Matters fan? Has she got that's that's more of her, her speed, I bet. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what? I, I think I think right now we're uh, we're kicking it old school. We're showing some old school things that you know my wife and myself uh, used to watch, such as you know all the Nickelodeon, Rugrats, uh, oh, all, the, all, sure. all, all, all the Nick at Night stuff that we used to sit on the big red couch, big orange couch. Oh, you know? um, are you afraid of the dark? Oh my God! Yeah, I mean oh, the, the best, the best shows. You know, <laughs> so. I agree. Well, we best. look. Right, and we look we look forward to hearing more about this app. We want to work with you guys. I'm so excited to have Daniel come on and talk about it. We were so thankful that you could come on this week with us and spend a little time. And I hope you're staying safe out in California. Absolutely. Uh, I know I know this is really tough for everybody, but you know this what we're trying to do with our audience is is just give them a little love and a little laugh, and uh, you know trying to get everybody through this while we're all quarantined at home together. So hey, uh, anything you. I could do for you guys, you let me know. I I, I just you know spent the last 48 hours really looking into to um, hometown heroes and what you guys have going on and it, and it, it couldn't be better. So I, I'm on board to support you and uh, come back on your show anytime. I appreciate that, Brian. Thank uh, we, we thank we couldn't be happier that you came on this week. Please stay safe. Tell your family hello for us and we'll uh, we'll chat with you soon. Same to you guys. Take care. We'll see you All later. Right. Thanks so much. Bye bye. Absolutely. Bye bye. That was Brighton James, everybody. Brighton James. Uh, you can catch him on Young and the Restless. And, uh, of course, check out Family Matters. It's one of Adam's favorite shows. So when I told him Brighton James is coming out, Adam's like, you kidding me? He's like, I love that show. Like, that was like <laughs> Adam's. I mean, you kind of do resemble Urkel, but I think you said Brighton was one of your hey. favorite characters, actually, on the show. There, so he, there he is. Look, right there. So we, didn't have the, uh, we didn't have this queued up before. I always watch it. But, uh, Hello, yeah, Richie. There he is. <laughs> Great show. Wait, 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 wait. Mike, Mike. Yeah. Who doesn't love yeah. Uncle Carl, right? Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> I'm saying, who doesn't love Uncle Carl? That guy, the guy's a genius. He, he um, we were talking about it the other day. He makes cameos in all these different movies, and he's always playing a cop, sure. like he always Don't played yourself. on Family Matters. Sure, if you want to play, he's in the uh, box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nakatomi Plaza, never forget. Ne- never forget, never forget. There's, there's Brighton on the show. You can see him right there. Um, we're ha- we're going to have Daniel Goddard on next week. Daniel's also on Young and the Restless, and Daniel will fill us in a little bit more on that app, which sounds really cool. I think that's something that we would uh, we would want to use at Hometown Heroes. So. Yeah, I, I absolutely think so. You know, myself getting into the social media marketing, um, I think that would be a great platform for myself to use, uh, you know, personally, but also in business. 
Absolutely. We'll check it out next week. Um, I am starving. Are you hungry? I, I, I'm absolutely hungry. I have Ada in the background. She's screaming because she's so hungry. Well, so, Folks, you know uh, our next guest, and, 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 and this guy, I want him to tell you all about the charity work he's doing. I, I am not going to do it justice by explaining it here. Uh, do we have Chef Lou dialed? We'll have Chef Lou in just a second here. You got viewers. This is what happens when you do a live show. We're going to fix that next week. I don't know. Is it warm? I know we got the food here. Can anybody see me? I got a nice little care package here from uh, Blend on Main. Chuck, can you help me out with this? Thanks. I, I, I got my food right here, Mike. Oh, thanks. I got to wait. See, we're in the studio over here doing stuff. You got, you know, Denise taking care of you, bringing Ada up. Mike, food's cold, but that's fine. So Blend On Main in Manasquan, New Jersey. Of course, obviously, the restaurants are not open right now, but Lou is doing a lot to help, especially first responders. He started matching donations and getting meals out to the front lines. Uh, right now, they're at 57% of their goal. Uh, it's, it's hashtag March to 50K meals and, uh, chef, and hashtag Chef Lou's Army. I know I have a shirt somewhere, and I don't know where it went, but this here it is. Chef Lou's Army as we're trying to get Lou on the line. I see him. He's right there. There you are. I was just trying to buy some time, Lou. How you doing, buddy? Uh, and he's gone. Good. What about you? you guys, there he is. I love it. Good. Chef. Good. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having me on. Hey, uh, Chef, turn your phone sideways if you can. <laughs> well, uh, maybe go back the other way. We'll just have you the front way. It's fine. Live, uh, live is not always the best. That's fine. We appreciate you coming on the show. Tell it. Can you tell? There you go. Now I can see Lou. That's fantastic. We put your shirt right here on the chair. What? Uh, tell us what you're doing. I know you got a lot of charity stuff going on. You're trying to help people that are affected by COVID. Doing a lot with the hospitals, a lot with first responders. Elaborate on that. Well, we knew early on uh, this was going to be a mess uh, for quite some time, and it was going to affect so many in so many ways. And you know, we're an isolated group of individual chefs. And we definitely have the ability uh, to get many items, uh, <laughs> just so many different ways to get provisions um, and to get them out to the customers. And if, if I was kind of screaming early on to get, um, you know, my fellow, my colleagues to get in the kitchen and make an impact on their local communities. And, and while we were doing so, we realized there were some people that just needed some things. You know, there were some stranded seniors. Um, you know, there's, there's vets that definitely needed our attention, some help. And then, you know, in the hospitals, you know, these, these healthcare workers are so stressed, so stressed, as, you know, the, you know just, just thinking about taking it home, uh, coming to it every day, never being able to escape the invisible enemy. Uh, so we just wanted to keep it positive. So we're on day 31. We're moving strong. Uh, we're at actually 63% of our goal, and we're going to try to smack it out of the park before uh, before uh, this is all over and just try to get 50,000 meals out uh, between the chefs and I that we've coordinated throughout the state. You want to shout out some of the other chefs you're working with? Yeah, I mean, uh, Chris Barlow down in uh, LBI did a fantastic job in the southern half. Um, we that, did. That's Long Beach Island, New Jersey. I just want to tell you because we have viewers from all over the country here. So, oh yeah, Island, New Jersey. Uh, we had a couple couple guys in Tom's River really stepped up. Capone's uh, Pizzeria did a great job for uh, one of the hospitals down that way, and a bunch of individuals. Um, we also had Ohana. We had uh, who who's in Lava Lead, uh, Four Seasons Diner. You know, fantastic group of individuals just stepping up. They're, it's all on my website at chefluzarmy.com. We we started a website just to get, you know, let everyone see what's happening and how it's happening, who's doing what. It's really a call for, it was really a call for everyone to just get off their ass and help and from the solace of their own kitchen, you know. I have the yeah. same group of individuals in my kitchen for the past 31 days 
Um, and, you know, we made a promise early on that too many people were counting on us. So we have provisions going out uh, to all over the state. You know, we're getting food out to people that need it. We're working with uh, uh, also some organizations, some community outreach organizations, like specifically a need we feed in uh, Ocean County, a great group of people that find people that are in trouble and, and coordinate guys like me and get them get them help. So there's definitely um, it's, it's definitely a, a trying time. But, you know, you always look for the helpers, and, I, and I'm happy to be one of the helpers at this point. Yeah, I've got a few meals here. I think the audience can see. But I, uh, these are prepackaged that you have delivered to the studio today, social distancing. I appreciate you feeding us because I'm starving. Um, and this is kind of what goes out, right? Yeah, you know, we do uh, anywhere from 100 to uh, we've done, a, you know, we had one day we did 2,000 in one day. Right. Um, so we try to, I mean, we're, we're cooking, we're cooking early on in the morning and we're here late. I uh, have guys in the kitchens now and, um, you know, you know, we have pots on the stove, 50 gallon, uh, going to pasta sauces, different, you know, just, just so many things, uh, to keep it going and to keep it, to keep it fresh. Speaking of kitchen. So you were on, you were on, uh, you were featured on Hell's Kitchen with, uh, Gordon Ramsay. I know that was a... <laughs> A similar show. Um, it was more like um, 24 Hours to Hell and Back. Okay. And I went there. We, we actually went to Hell and Back. Uh, but uh, this seems like a, um, a little more trying <laughs> than that was, this situation. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Did, 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 did the show help the, the restaurant, or how was that? You know, they came to me early on, and they said, hey, you looking for a renovation, and I need one. You know, every five years, you got to freshen up. And they came in uh, in a Trojan horse, and they were looking for things they didn't find, and, you know, it had to make it interesting. And, and uh, you know, I, I would do it again. My wife wouldn't, but uh, it helped us out, get us a little, you know, got us on the map. Um, but, you know, he, when, when, when Gordon Ramsay comes in your uh, kitchen and says, you're a great chef, uh, but you're just a jerk. Uh, I'll, I'll take it. You know? <laughs> All right. So, so Lou, I just wanted to let you know that uh, Blend on Main has become a favorite restaurant of mine. Um, when my wife ha um, was pregnant, we had her, her baby shower at Blend on, on Main. All right. Awesome. All right. Um, our first date for my birthday was at Blend on Main. So. All right. uh, I, I, re I really respect what you're doing, and um, we're here to support you in any way. And um, if you need us, and we would love to merge with you, and you know, support each other in this trying time. And um, we have we have your organization on our um, show here tonight, and we we love to help with those donations and get them in. And any way that we can get the word out there, just let us know. I appreciate it. You go to my website, uh, blendonmain.com, and we're matching donations. Um, so if you, we have, we've had some fortunate uh, luck where people are, you know, they're buying 10, 10 dinners for a healthcare worker. We match 10. So 20 right. go out. Um, and we also have uh, apparel. If you buy apparel, it definitely feeds the uh, funds. We're going to keep going as long as possible, as long as we could possibly go and feed people. I'll go to a hundred thousand meals. Um, if people are still you know, willing to provide them, there are definitely people. I actually am. I'm upset because I get phone calls from hospitals saying, "Hey, why not us?" You yeah, know? I got. I just want you to. I got a couple of nurses that just tweeted it, and they said, "Thank you, Chef, for the nurses appreciate you and your crew." So, it's not. It's not going unnoticed. But um, yeah, you, know, but you always you always think about the ones that were you know you can't get to, and you know I, I you know if my if my colleagues just got up, you know, and and got in their kitchens again, I don't see anybody. I really don't. I put a thousand dollar bounty on myself. If you find me in the street, I'll give you a thousand dollars. You can't find me because I'm in my kitchen. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, it's, it's that simple. Get in the kitchen, do some things, you know, to help the community and they'll stand behind you. Yeah. What's well, got to be tough for you? This is a family business, obviously. And you have just one location, right? Or is it two? What do you have now? I have I have one location. Uh, we were. Um, I have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, you know, we definitely work hard, uh, and we don't know what's good to come of, of of this after. Right now, we're focused on just help, uh, and when we no longer need to help, and we can go back as a restaurant, we'll figure it out. 
That's awesome. Um, Lou, my, my uh, one question before we got to get going, what inspired you to do this whole Chef Lou's Army? Um, did you just wake up one morning, you said, you know what, I'm going to open up my doors, I'm going to, you know, make meals, sell toilet paper, hand sanitizer for my distributors. Um, what, what, what made you do this? It was just to prove that you can make se- chefs are resourceful. A good chef yeah. is resourceful. Mm-hmm. And I can get I can get so many things to so many people, uh, you know. And if if that if that's really what it was, I can I can pull an army together. I can feed fifty thousand people. I can feed a hundred thousand people. I just need the uh, the help and um, you know the 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 assistance of you know chefs stepping up. That's it. That's great. Since we're live here, do you want to shout out any of your purveyors that are providing you with uh, any of the items? Um, do you want to shout out any of your crew, uh, your, uh, I mean, your family? 100%. Uh, the crew that's been with me uh, the entire time, Madison, um, Cesar, Derek, uh, Christine, my wife, Tara, she's been with me the whole time. I mean, I'm pushing her, too, and uh, <laughs> she, pushes, she pushes back. Don't worry. Uh, she's tough for a little one. Uh, Driscoll Foods has been fantastic. Uh, Dairyland, uh, Frank uh, from Dairyland has done wonderful stuff for us uh, from Chef's Warehouse. Um, so, uh, you know, the guys have all stepped up and done things to uh, make it easier on getting us to and, and giving us the ability to help people. That's great. That's awesome. Mike, you want any closing words? I just want to, you know, it's funny, it, it, what you're doing is so inspirational. We have, um, immediately after this show, Lou, uh, we have a live feed from California. There's a chef out there, Monica Barajas from Monica's Livermore, and they're doing an entire um, uh, musical event where they're going to stream it live. We're going to post it here on our, on our Hometown Heroes page. And what you're doing is kind of inspiring. I hope other people like you and like Monica will step up to do the right thing. I think if folks want to join you, uh, they can go. We got it up on the screen now, right now, blendonmain.com slash Chef Lou's Army. Um, I would encourage people to get in touch with you so that uh, you can keep this thing going and hopefully help more people, right? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm going to go to, like, somebody's got to tell me to stop. Uh, you know, um, that's it. You know, and it, it does cost money. Um, but I'm like I said, we're matching it all. If you do it, I'll do it. That's That's, that's my problem. Well, anything we can do to help at Hometown Heroes, please let us know. Uh, we're, we're so proud of the work you're doing. Anything, like I said, you know, Adam and I are, are right there with you. The rest of Hometown Heroes will support and get the word out. And hopefully uh, this uh, hopefully this thing will die out sooner than later. And you can get back to uh, some normalcy at Blend On Maybe. Look forward to visiting you this summer and having some dinner there. And, and, and the food the food is fantastic. Thank you so much. And I, I love the vodka sauce with the with the chopped meat. Amazing. So I think it's eat mine yet because somebody didn't heat it up in the studio, but that's okay. So I'm looking forward to having this right now. Lou, thank you so much for joining us. Really You're appreciate welcome. having you here. And uh, thank please you stay in having, touch. No. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I just want to again thank my wife and kids because they've been supportive. And uh, without them, I couldn't get this done. I do appreciate it. And we we have a picture of them right here for you. So uh, they're they're right on the screen, so you can see them. Yeah, and uh, Infons too. Nobody knows what that means, but Infons is 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 the reason why. All right, awesome. Well, we'll see you soon, and um, I can't wait to actually come and see you at your restaurant and sit down again at the white tablecloth. So let's get let let's get it going. Thanks, we'll talk buddy. soon. Thanks All so right. much. Bye, guys. Bye. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna eat some food because I'm starving over here. Um, we got Monica Baraja, right? She on? Yeah, yeah. We're uh, she she's waiting, and uh, they have to start their uh their concert soon. So um, let's get her on. And... Adam, why don't you tell everybody what that's about so I can actually have a bite of uh, Chef Lou's meal over here that he's so huh? I'm eating too. Come on, what are you doing? You're at home. I mean, I got. I still got to go home. I got work to do. Yeah, tell everybody what's going on in California tonight in uh, Monica's Livermore. So um, Mo- Monica owns a wonderful restaurant called Monica's Livermore. It's an American restaurant. Um, they do lunch, uh, breakfast, and uh, well, let's do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, they are such a great community builder. They're actually taking 
um, donations and they're building meat packages and fresh fruit packages and donating them to uh, food pantries and people that are in need of food. So um, let's, uh, can you, can let's you bring her in. Uh, uh, our producer just asked me if you can bring her into our group. Okay, no, no problem. Um, bring her in. Yeah, to Skype. All right, I don't know if I could do that, but uh, let's see. By the way, I found all the toilet paper and paper towels. They're here at DJ Expert Live Studio, so you need to wipe your butt. Come here. Adam, we're live, you know. Uh, I, I know we're live. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what Monica's name is on uh, Skype here, so... Well, it's Monica Barajas. Or DJ Mike West, she can call in. Or, or she can call in a DJ Mike West. All right, so... Just lost half our viewers. I know, we lost all our viewers here, so... Uh, Nobody wants to watch me eat on TV. Just say it. All right, so I'm trying to get her in here, but... um. This is excellent, by the way. I don't know what Chef Lou did. He put like something in, in here that's really, it's like crack or something. It's so good. Well, what are you eating? I don't, I don't know how to describe that. It's excellent. What's, what, what are you eating? It's uh, chicken, rice, and whatever sauce this is, is like ridiculous. Oh, you're eating the Marsala. That's what you're eating right now. And it still says Chef Lou on my screen, by the way. Just FYI. So, Mike, I think we're doing a great job here. Um, every week, um, we're going to try to do this on Fridays. Obviously, you know, Fridays are pretty busy in the event world. So we can do, you know, this show Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but, uh, Fridays is working out for us. And, um, what's better than, you know, hanging out with friends and having people watch some great celebrities come on and, uh, you know, doing our thing. All right. So what am I doing here? I want to get Monica on here because she's going to tease her show. I'm I'm trying to get her. Um, you you have her. I gave it to you, Monica Barajas. <laughs> All I'm right. I'm gonna tell her to dial in right now. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying, guys. For those of you who are still watching and haven't jumped off the feed, is what happens when you're doing a Skype show live. Okay, I'm gonna try to get her in here. Um, Okay. I thought you had her, Michael. Yeah. No communication. She hasn't accepted my phone. Oh. She hasn't accepted. Adam, get her on the phone. Seriously. All right. Let me let me see if we can get her on here. Yeah, I'd love to. But she's doing her thing. I mean, we're kind of done anyway. So, folks, we're done with what we're doing. But we are going to do something out in California. It's in Alameda County, which is just about 30 minutes uh, away from San Francisco. Yeah. All right, Monica, I I know what? we're trying to get you on Skype, but it's not working, but we got you on the phone and you're live right now. So uh, if you can hear us, um, no, no, so yeah, you can hear us. OK, so I just yeah. want to see if you can possibly uh, um, your your Skype ID. Are, are you are you up right now? Is that what you're? Are we what? Say that again, Adam. I believe. Um, I'm just trying to get your Skype ID so we can get you in here. Okay, uh, it's Monica. Yep. M N I C A. Yep. I've got you. Wait a minute. I I've, I've got you on here. Accept. Yep. Please accept, no, and then we'll bring you in. Just put your video on with the little video symbol, and then we'll be all good to go. Watch me eat. So. Where'd you go? Okay. Got her? Yeah, I'm here. This is fun, right? Now people can see. All right. I'm going to hang up with you because I think we got you on Skype. Okay. Hey, Monica. Hey, hey Monica. Where is she? <laughs> How are you? Good. We got you, finally. So uh, you're gearing up for this event right now, and uh, we're going to go live in just a little bit. We're going to get you on the screen here, and um, tell me a little bit what's going on uh, tonight. 
So we are doing a fundraiser um, here in Livermore for local food banks, uh, raising money for and food for donations. There she is. Oh. I can see you, Monica. <laughs> for people who don't have food um, and don't have access to food or access to assistance. Um, being a restaurant, I know that there's a lot of people that work in the restaurant industry that do not have access to help um, like some of us do. We've been super fortunate here at Monica's to be able to keep 12 of our employees on staff um, and rotating shifts and getting people hours, whether it's you know minimal or a couple of days a week or in order to keep our produce and meat boxes going out to people and deliveries going out to people and takeout and bakery items. But Monica, we feel Monica, that we have back. Monica, I have, I have food because Chef, Chef Lou brought some into the studio tonight and they told him <laughs> all about you. Yes, because but we wanted to also tease what you're doing. Um, and, and I think you know, that's it's so uh, we've had some time that we've spent a lot of time on the phone over the last uh, couple of weeks just talking about what you've done and how to put this together. Tonight, yeah. you're going to go live like now, right? With yeah, musicians John, that are all over California. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I mean, we have, it's going off my Facebook page, so I don't know what the reach is, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> Great. We have one of our musicians is streaming from Idaho. Um, he just moved a few months ago, so he's going to be streaming in from Idaho. And then uh, Jeff and Nick are going to be here in, in the restaurant, in the dining room, uh, six feet apart. <laughs> and and uh, Rochelle here from Livermore downtown is going to be talking to you a little bit about what we're doing um, and just hoping to get everybody on board, watching some music and enjoying some, uh, some quality time at home and maybe hitting some donation buttons and getting some food to people. That's very cool. Before you bring her in, could you just tell us a little bit about your restaurant? I know it's tough right now. Everybody's closed. Tell us a little bit about Monica's Livermore. Wow. Um, we're only we're going to be two years old in August, so we're a fairly uh, young restaurant, um, but we're uh, a big volume restaurant. We seat almost 200 and, uh, 250 when we're fully seated. Um, we have a huge patio. We've been lucky enough to have uh, local, local live music and be a venue for that. Um, we do breakfast, lunch, bakery, um, bar, uh, <laughs> catering, um, bake, you know, just everything. Um, and we're super excited about what we're doing here and the vibe we've created and the community that we've created here and want to keep it going. So we're trying to reach out to as many people as we can right now. Now, I don't, now Monica, are, are you a chef yourself or you're just a, a restaurateur? I'm just a person who likes to cook and feed people. So okay. what, do you, what do you mean just a restaurant tour? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a huge thing. I don't, I don't want to own a restaurant. Adam, I think Adam just, that was a backhanded compliment that, that um, came out of I, Adam. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm getting exhausted over here. You know, it's, it's, it's still day over in California right now. So it is. Yeah. There's still light out. Now we're, we're just, I've just always loved to um, feed people. I always have, I've done it in my home. I had a little restaurant prior to this one, but this has been a, a big, big project and it's so much fun and I'm really enjoying it. Very cool. It's awesome. I think it's awesome what you're doing. I, I really, I, I'm so glad we got to hook up with you and that, you know, you're doing this event through Hometown Heroes because that's really what Hometown Heroes does is we provide a platform for people to step up and be heroes, and that's what you are. You're a hometown hero, just like Chef Lou, who we had on before. Uh, and we love highlighting folks like that and, and, and all of our guests tonight who are heroes in their own right, helping out uh, us tonight, helping out their community. I think it's so cool what you're doing. Um, do you have uh, you have a guest that wants to tell us about the project? Yeah, or? I have Rochelle here, and of course, she's from Livermore downtown. She's going to tell you a little bit about what everybody's doing in the community. Hi guys. Hey, how are you? Good. We're in Livermore. We're six feet apart, but connected at the heart. So uh, we're, we're getting through this all together. Um, I, I just want to say, I, Monica having this idea tonight to go virtual with her live music, which has been such a gift to the community. Uh, we have a rule in our downtown and in Livermore that there's no such thing as a stupid idea. 
but there is such a thing as crazy ideas and those are always the most successful. So uh, we really are, you know, proud that when she called, she's like, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? Is it crazy? And we're like, that's why it's going to work. So thank you guys for supporting it. The money that's raised tonight, um, one of the things that's so heavy on our heart right now is that our hospitality workforce, uh, whether they're restaurant workers, hair, hair and nails, health and beauty, they are out of work completely. And um, they have been hardworking, taking care of this community all these years, giving us the experiences that we, you know, we really want. And uh, for the first time, they are in need. And it's very daunting to try to figure out how do I get groceries? I've never had to be a part of the system. And so by raising money tonight, and Monica's done a great job of getting food purveyors involved too, that don't have restaurants to deliver to, but they can get direct food now to the consumer through things like this. And so um, knowing now that our food pantry will have the support it needs and our uh, hot lunches that are being served, we talked to the Open Heart Kitchen uh, before the COVID crisis, they were they were serving about 40 lunches a day. Right now, they're hitting 250 lunches, and it increases every day. Wow. And we know that there's another wave of layoffs about to happen uh, within all of our communities because people have tried to keep going and hitting that moment of going, I don't know. I may have to let some people go. Uh, so we think this is the beginning. Uh, we don't think that tonight's going to solve the problems. Um, but I just love that we, you know, that I have the privilege of working with small business owners and entrepreneurs that have the ability to make quick decisions, do creative things for community, and give back. And so we're very proud of Mom. And she, you know, awesome. she is a chef. Don't let her fool you. <laughs> I eat what she cooks. It's not, it's not a home cooked thing. <laughs> That's great. Well, M Monica and uh, everybody, you know, in Livermore, thank you so much for doing what you're doing. And Monica, get that Facebook feed ready to go and let's go live because I'm ready to rock right now. So. Oh, and I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Fresh Point in San Francisco and U.S. Foods here in San Francisco and Cisco San Francisco and Del Monte Foods who are all donating food. Um, we've already taken in a thousand pounds of produce and a thousand dollars in food from Cisco. And we're working on getting the rest from everybody else, but they're all on board. Great. And, and, awesome. and, yeah, that's awesome. And also, I just want to add that um, if, if you're watching this feed, um, Monica, there, there we are. Look at that. Monica has, um, you know, her donation site, which is hometownheroes.rev.co backslash Monica's, all right? So it's right here, right above Monica on our that's feed. That's a forward and slash. So find that. That's a forward slash. It's also on my website. It's on our yep. Instagram. It's on our so yeah. Yeah, we'll be we'll be accepting donations for Monica's uh, for Monica's Livermore tonight. So it, that is tax deductible for a five hundred one c three. If you want to make a donation, all that money is going to go to a good cause. So every donation coming in tonight um, uh, from the start of Monica's uh, broadcast is all going to this this program so that uh, she can help feed folks out in California. Uh, we're so proud of the work you're doing, Monica. I think it's really awesome. Are you ready to go? We're ready. Dawn's ready. wait. Let him All play. Right. All right. Well, we'll say goodbye to our audience, and then we'll patch everybody into your audience. So, Monica, thank you again. Thanks. I want to thank all of our guests. You got it. Of course, all of our guests. You had Tommy John, uh, Brighton James, and, of course, Chef Blue and Monica's Livermore. We'll see you guys next week, Friday at 7 o'clock. And stay tuned so you can see the uh, the show. You're going to be going from, uh, well, it's Eastern John time. Paul. I just playing from his house in Concord, and then Jeff uh, Jeff Ricketts and Nick Tyrell will be playing at 6:30, and then Mondo Mariscal from his house in Idaho. Okay, so you got a few hours of music, so everybody stay tuned, check it out, make a donation, help out these fine folks, and we'll see you all next week. Good night, everybody. Good night, Monica. That's it. See you soon. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs>